days to look over your first game? What are some things that really jumped out to you in evaluations? Um, you know, it was a good start. Kind of like I said after the game, um, happy with you know my overall performance. Uh, you know, personally as a team, I was happy with the way we did things. Um, but you know, we, we were able to grade the film, um, watch it as a team on Sunday, and um, you know, obviously now we're starting to move on. So. The old coaching cliche is you make the big jump from week one to week two. What's something you'd like to make a big jump in this week? Um, I didn't like well, obviously with the um, you know turning the ball over. Um, that was a you know obviously a crucial mistake in the game. So um, heightened awareness, I guess, of my ball security um, is the biggest thing I want to work on. I guess. Is there an excitement for you to play in front of the home home crowd for the first time? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, been hearing a lot of things really since. Uh, you know, Mississippi State started to become an option to, you know, come here. And I've uh, been hearing a lot of good things about, you know, Dave Wade. And I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, you know, to get in for the first time. Now it's only Tuesday, but what have you all kind of seen of Southern Miss so far? Um, feisty group, team that plays really hard. Um, you know, really well coached. You can tell that they, uh, you know, kind of have like a chip on their shoulder. And, um, you know, they're going to play hard for all four quarters. So um, we're definitely excited for the opportunity. Excited to, uh, you know, like, like you said, get, get back in front of the home crowd and, um, you know, just, Take another step forward, and um, you know, play to our potential. Coach Moore had said on Monday that he felt like you were very decisive with the football. When you go back and look at yourself on film, how do you feel about your decision making? Yeah, no, I mean, there's, there's obviously when you, you know, when you watch games, you want a couple throws back, and or I guess a couple of decisions you could say, and you know, I think the same. Um, you know, missing the post early in the first half uh, to Osiris would have been a big play for us. Um, you know, a few, few things. I wish I had a couple of throws back. Um, but as far as the decision making, I didn't necessarily, um, with maybe the exception of one or two plays, I thought that you know each each time, um, or I guess each rep, um, I was looking in the right spot and uh, making the appropriate decision based off of what I saw. And so, um, you know, game plan, and they did you know did, did some things differently, I guess, than what we were expecting. But we were able to clean it up on the sideline and um, you know change a few things there. So, uh, all in all, um, happy with the performance and you know uh, new week, new opponent. Without giving too much away, were you under any kind of instructions of don't run too often or you know limit the amount of contact you took first game? No, no, it was never really a thing. Um, you know, coach wanted us just to you know play our game, and um, if the situation you know came where I needed to use my legs as a weapon, that was you know what I was I guess being coached to do. Uh, but there was never a uh, don't run here or you know make sure if you know you run here or something like that. There was never a conversation. So. Um, and maybe that just goes based off of you know our relationship, um, you know, knowing each other for a long time. And obviously, you don't want a lot of unnecessary hits, but um, you know whatever it's going to take to you know give the team the best chance to win, I'm going to do so. Obviously, we don't know play calls or plays or anything like that. But from our vantage point, it appears your receivers played pretty well. What was your assessment of that group? Yeah, yeah, and no, I was very excited with how we played. Uh, I can't remember exactly. I want to say nine. I think nine, nine guys had touches in the game, and um, you know. I guess Osiris was the big standout. I targeted him a bunch. I remember talking to you guys after the game. I didn't even really realize it. I guess that's um, you know kind of just the, the way the system rolls. Um, you know, it's never looking. I guess that. I mean, obviously we have matchups that we like to see and go after during situations. But um, you know, a lot of a lot of talent in that room, and um, you know, there's there's a there's a high expectation for everybody that's out there. And you know, we're really really excited and really fired up about all of them. So. Um, you know, I trust that you know whenever whoever's running, I don't know, use a corner route for example. I mean, whoever's running the route, I'm trusting them to get open and um, you know give them a chance to make a play. Osiris in particular, what have you seen from him since you've been here? You did, like you said, you did target him a lot, and I know mm -hmm. a lot. It's just what you know, what you saw what and what I, it dictated. Yeah. But what have you seen from Osiris since, since you arrived? Um, you know, early on, um, even before I guess camp got into things, Osiris was one of those guys that um, you know you could just. You can count on him. He's he's a guy that's going to work. I mean, there have been multiple times where you know we've been able to come up and, and work out in the indoor at nighttime when nobody else is around. And um, you know, I've, I've been able to share similar experiences with some of you know the really talented receivers. Uh, you know, when I was at Penn State, um, you know, guys like Saeed Blacknaw. I'm not sure if you guys are aware. Um, you know, he was he was with the Raiders for a little bit with the with the Dolphins a little bit. I was a roommate with him. Uh, Jawan Johnson, who's who transferred same class as me, he's at Oregon right now. Um, also lived with him at a time and you know shared some similar experiences with them where I was able to go into our indoor late at night work and um, just you know clean some things up and so obviously that's another similarity that I have uh, here with Osiris and there was you know there was a couple of guys that I would get, get together and work with and 
Um, but, you know, big, strong, fast kid that um, obviously is going to be a big weapon for us this season. What's it like to have to play with three different centers in one? Um, <laughs> I've never experienced it before, um, but I think that it was what was really cool was you know nobody really batted an eye, nobody was um, I guess stunned by it. I mean it wasn't necessarily it was kind of just like you know what's what's next, and um, we were just you know trying to make 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 plays happen, and uh, you know that was that was I guess the hand that we were dealt for that game. But you know each guy stepped in and did a really good job. I think that. Uh, I seen a stat that you know each offensive possession was some sort of different rotation, I guess, of offensive linemen. So, um, you know, really proud of those guys. Like I said after the game, I, mean, I thought they played an outstanding game, especially given the circumstances of uh, the way the game played out and the injuries that were that that happened. And so, um, like I said after the game, I was really excited after watching the film. I mean, they played they played amazing. You kind of touched on it, but at Penn State, obviously, you had guys like Mike Jusecki or Dejon Hamilton who were kind of like the number one guy. Who, kind of clear cut. Mm -hmm. With this, you got a lot of number of guys who can make plays. Yeah. What's that like? I guess, how would you kind of assess the, the the wide receivers room and I guess, you know, knowing that you can go kind of all over the place to make plays? Yeah, no, I, I think that I guess that could be uh, something that's maybe a, a misconception maybe um, because, I mean, that was kind of how I felt about the guys at Penn State too. Um, you know, a guy named Chris Godwin played X for us, was a really good player in 2016. Um, and Jawan was able to play the X after that. but. Um, you know, DeAndre Tompkins was able to play the Z uh, there. I mean, we had a lot of guys that, you know, I, every guy that I've named, with the exception of Juwan, who's still at Oregon, has had some sort of stunt in the NFL. So, um, <coughs> you know, a lot of talent there. And I think, I think the, the coolest thing, I guess, about this group here is, um, you know, we had, we had guys that were, you know, true X's, true, you know, Z's. And our guys here, um, really, we, we, can, we can play them all over the place. And so, um, obviously, it gives us an opportunity to uh, put some defenses in, in challenging um, situations. And um, it's, it's, it's really advantage us, I feel like, when, I, when you're able to do that. How much does it help you as a quarterback, having guys who can kind of play the mismatch and move them around the field? I mean. Yeah, it's awesome. And I think that it's another credit, I guess, to the coaching staff of being able to, um, you know, think of these type of things for us and, um, you know, come up with some unique formations to, you know, force defenses into giving them or giving us what, what we want, what we want to attack. What's it like having Keaton back this week? It's good. It's really good. Um, really, really happy to have him back in the room. Um, um, you know, with the, the exception of, I guess, you know, depth obviously is, is the first thing that comes to mind. But um, KT is a friend. I'm glad that he's back. He's uh, he's been awesome since the time that I got here. Um, and like I said, I couldn't couldn't be more fired up to have him back. You a big fan of cowbells? <laughs> yeah, I uh, you know I, I haven't heard it. I haven't heard it. I guess you know what I've what I've you know, been hearing about how loud it gets, and I haven't really experienced that with the exception of being at a baseball game uh, when I first arrived on campus. So. Um, you know, I bought my mom one, <laughs> so I heard you're not allowed to buy your own. Uh, so I got my mom one for Mother's Day, so she'll be here with hers. But um, you know, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm really excited, really excited to, to see the place and, and see all the fans come out for the first home game. Parents coming down for game one? Uh, my mom, my mom, my dad's staying home. My dad, my brother plays Saturday too. So uh, my mom, my sister, my both grandmas I think are coming and. Um, I think my aunt's coming too. I'm not sure I get some extra tickets. <laughs> How cool is that to just have family in, in the stands with you behind you? Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Um, you know, my mom, my dad, and my sister were able to come to the game this weekend, and um, you know, one of the first times I guess that they've actually been on time to the game. Uh, they uh, they were able to be there. I was able to see them pregame and, and talk to them or talk to my dad, and my mom before the game. So uh, spent some time with them at the hotel the night before. It's just really cool, really cool, and I know that they're uh, really excited about you know everything that's been going on.